If you sub to me because of New World, I've got some big news for you guys today. The March update, Heart of Madness, is coming out tomorrow, March 29th, 2022. And it's going to see some big quality of life changes as well as a new expedition for you guys to play. So let's go over the patch notes together. I'm going to read the most important stuff. I'm also going to link this in the description of the video below the first paragraph if you want to read it for yourself. So this is the March update, Heart of Madness, March 28th, 2022. They're going to add in the blunderbuss. It's a new weapon. They're going to add a new expedition and a lot of quality of life stuff. Basically, new new expedition, Tempest Heart, recommended players, recommended gear score 550, 570, obviously level 60. New weapon, blunderbuss, and it's going to offer high mobility coupled, coupled with potent close to mid-range damage. First weapon, a scale on strength and intelligence, making it a good companion for bruiser, bruisers or mage builds. So that's an interesting new weapon. If you guys haven't seen it yet, we'll check that out in the future. And world experience. There's a bunch of random stuff. There's new world painting, vista views. You can find a painting, and then once you find it, you can put it in your house. Uh, raffle bones, some random NPC you can find that will drop obsidian gypsum if you're level 60. It'll just drop all sorts of random stuff. And if you find it in a zone that's above level 60, it'll give you 500 umbral shards. But it sounds like it'll be pretty rare. But we'll see. Now a bunch of random stuff for mid-level players, new mid-level player stuff, Weaver's Fan, Restless Shore and stuff. More mid-level stuff right there too. So for the open world, they double the storage bonus for all tiers of storage chests. Chests that used to provide 200 weight now give 400, etc. So now you're able to get more storage in your towns that have houses. And then they adjust the description of trophies, better clarify what the benefit will be. Now when you start the game, you can pick from four different weapons, nice for new players. And then territory storage. Remove the, oh, this is the big one. This is the biggest one for me as a trader is that now you can just transfer items between storages, no matter what faction owns what territory and it's free to do that. Uh, so if you have stuff over in Windsward and you're hanging out in Ebon scale and you want to get it, you can just open up your storage from there and just transfer it over. It's going to be really nice for me as someone who just plays this game to trade most of the time to raise money, actually raise money to give it to my company. That's literally what I do on top of playing OPR. Anyway. Uh, player to player collision removed from open world expeditions and invasions and fast travel is now responsive, more responsive when traveling short distances. So expeditions, the biggest quality of life change is that now you only need one person at the entrance in order to start it. Everyone else will teleport in. Other than that, there's just uh, random fixes and stuff for random stuff. And one little gem in here, which is that they added tier four house into reek water and ebon scale reach. Pretty cool. And general fixes for some stuff right here. And then we got quests. It's uh, nothing too crazy other than they added Gypsum as a reward to levels to level 60 quests in Shattered Mountains, Reekwater, and Ebon Scale Reach. So that's pretty cool. And then other than that, nothing too insane. Although there's new faction missions targeting corruption breaches can now be found in all zones. And then I don't recall anything insane here. Just fixes for stuff. Combat AI. AI got updated, so now it'll stay on the original target. There's no more of that stuff where you can attack something, run it near somebody, and then it just leash to them for no reason. Uh, you can't you can't grief players like that anymore, I don't think. And then there's also a grace period for AI to aggro after spawning, which is about five seconds. And other than that, just general AI to many different types of enemies. Nothing too insane. Uh, just AI fixes. Then we have combat. So the road speed boost buff is now applied to players using emotes like the gallop one. It was kind of silly, but RP potential. And now there's infinite ammo for bows and muskets. Where if you don't have ammo, it'll just let you keep shooting anyway, but it will uh, do normal. So basically, the, having no ammo makes you just do normal damage, and then having a type of ammo makes you do more damage. They also, I think, nerfed the amount, because I'm pretty sure Tier 5 Aura Calcum used to give 1.5 or something. They also increased the maximum stack count for ammo from 500 to 1,000, just quality of life for uh, bows and muskets, and the weight of the ammo has been removed. So again, quality of life for upgrade for bows and muskets. Honestly, they should have had it like that since launch, in my opinion. Fire Staff saw a change. Uh, buff, nerf area, whatever. I think it's a buff in a way because it just makes it happen faster. So um, the burning debuff it increases the damage tick rate. So it's 50% or 33% faster, but you can have less stacks. And the damage for stack uh, got doubled based off your weapon damage. So probably a buff in practic all practicality. Other than that, just bug fixes, bug fixes. There's probably some that matter in here, but... Nothing too totally crazy. No major one other than... Oh, not in this one. I'll have to find it later. There's a Void Gauntlet change that they... Because they, their patterns are all over the place. And then items. Uh, chain Elemental Perks now tell you how much they do. It's 11% weapon damage. 
Uh, damage ward port perks have all been like normalized. So uh, Abyssal Ward now does, so what is it, slightly more to start and then starts out, ends up ends basically the same. And so only tier one and two was changed. Thrust and whatever was also changed, but just increased in general. And then the arcane, fire, ice, nature, whatever was increased by a lot, actually. To, uh, at the end, 3.75% goes up, is now instead 6%. Pretty significant. And then Bloodletting Ring perk increases bleed duration bonus from 515. Instead, it goes 10 to 30. So just changes to make these more viable. They were kind of just useless garbage before, so that'll be nice. And then after that... I mean, there's a few changes here, like Retaliate. The perk has been re reworked, for giving a damage bonus for three hits after being hit three times, giving two second damage bonus after getting hit one time, and it'll not refresh while already active, so this changes. Nothing, nothing too crazy, though. Nothing too insane there. And then more just random fixes here. I don't recall anything too insane here. Uh, although, fix an issue where incoming healing efficiency modification was incorrectly being capped at 50 instead of 100%. That could have ramifications. I'm not entirely sure, though. Also, really cool here, game, modes, uh, game mode items such as Outpost Rush consumables will now auto-equip to your hotbar when purchase, provides an empty slot. Nice quality of life. Uh, now, a bigger quality of life, players can now queue for wars and invasions from their map. I can't wait for that. That's going to be nice. Uh, also, elite boss rings give better rewards, and doing a boss arena now gives 50 umbral shards. Here's the biggest change to the entire patch, by the way. If you were not aware of this one, this one's going to blow your mind. So, war. Defenders will no longer be able to respawn on point A, B, and C. They can only respawn inside their fort. So you're going to see territories changing hands like 10 times more often than you used to. And it's going to be make wars a lot more fun, but it's also going to be a lot more stressful for the defenders. Uh, increase the quantity and quality rewards that players receive from reward caches granted from war. So that'll be nice. They're also going to increase the quantity and quality of rewards that players receive from reward caches granted from invasions. And then they remove the downstay from OPR. You just die now instead. Credit for killing a player now goes to the player who kills an enemy instead of the player who puts them in death's door. They didn't fix this. This is a lie. This is not real. They fixed it by making it so there's no such thing as a down state because they don't know how to fix it is what that means. <laughs> That's really funny. So instead of being like, we'll make it so the down kill doesn't give you credit, they were like, we don't, we can't figure it out, so we'll just remove getting down, <laughs> which honestly kind of sucks in my opinion. It was so much fun to body block for someone to try to get them back up. I'll miss that. Uh, at least an OPR. I think they'll still have it in wars. I'm not sure. Players will now receive score credit for contesting a control point. Much needed change. Teams can now see the enemy progress towards a corrupted brute token on the map. And the tutorial pop-up for building gates has been restored. All right. Economy. Players will get half their original purchase cost back when abandoning a house. That's pretty cool. And the notification was selling some items from a multi-item contract has been restored. Can't wait for that. It's always fun to hear that, I hear that noise. And then crafting. Corrected the buttercream pudding category to attribute foods. And the amount of materials required to require to craft the arena tuning orbs has been reduced. Now it's three rune stones instead of five and three of the orb specific materials instead of five. Tool tips have also whatever craft mod selector pop up is now sort of alphabetically. Oh, new perks and new perk items been added to the world, but they don't even tell us what they are. I guess we just gotta find out. That's that could be significant. I wonder what they are. And then other than that, I don't recall anything too insane in here. All right, and then rewards. This is a huge change. They better. They they really got some confidence. They got rid of the bots. I never took the time to investigate. They really got rid of the bots. But my goodness, if they're still bots, this is going to be so stupid. So harvest, log, and mine to uncover hidden stashes, earthly rewards. So basically, when you're harvesting, logging, or mining, you'll randomly just get bonus elemental motes, coins, and diamond gypsum as you do it. So that will be interesting, uh, especially those elemental motes. That could change a lot in the market. And then elite boss arena keys may now drop from enemies in surrounding elite zones. That's pretty neat. Okay, and then gear and loot fixed a bunch of issues. Nothing too insane here other than this. Daily, daily cooldowns now refresh each day at 5 a.m. in each server's region's time. And weekly cooldowns refresh each Tuesday at 5 a.m. So no more of that wondering, has it been 18 hours since I last crafted my thing or whatever and all that BS. Instead, just know that every day, starting at 5 a.m., you can go ahead and do more gypsum. You can do more osmodium. You can... All that stuff, every day when you get on, be consistent. Quality of life. Uh, I don't recall anything too game-breaking or changing in here. Other than this. Player's average gear score now appears on the player's tooltip in the warboard. So basically, oh, this is... I mean, it's great. This is insane quality of life change for the organizers of the war, because I've been one before and it's hell on earth, if you guys don't know, but it'll make their lives easier. At the same time though, 
man, just more of that. You get to 625 gear score, you're locked out of the end game in this game because no cross server arenas yet. They are going to add them. No cross server fake wars just to play for fun. No casual wars yet. So unless you actually want to spend the 300, 600 hours playing this game to get to six, go from level one all the way to 625 gear score, no one's going to put you in a war. There's no chance. No, I, you know, especially as time goes on, there's more 625 gear score guys. No one's going to put you in a war, man. That's a shame. I mean, it's, it's a good change, though, but they really need to have cross-server, like, like Q, just like the uh, Alteric Valley in, in World of Warcraft. They need to have that, but, like, wars in this game. I'd have so much fun. I want to fix a bunch of issues with messaging. Nothing crazy. Usability, fix a bunch of stuff. Audio, fix a bunch of stuff. Now, this they're trying to claim was a direct result of internal testing efforts and players submitted feedback in the PTR. So now we can use our inventory while moving. Some people have wanted since launch. That's a thing. They're claiming it's because of us. So congratulations to all of you out there who complained on the forums about wanting this. Combat system. Now it tells you when you are in combat. And when you're out of combat, your bars and stuff disappear or something. Out of combat healing. Now when you're out of combat, you gain 40 health per second and gain mana twice as fast. And the food buff healing effectiveness is increased. So that way you can heal up faster out of combat, which is nice for just leveling, being out in the world, just playing normally. Then we got some combat changes. Nothing was too insane in here. Other than Void Gauntlet Petrifying Scream just got got hard nerfed. Reduced duration of the route from two seconds to one. That's it. Everything else was just kind of random fixes. All right. And then you can sign for OPR anywhere, but that was kind of mentioned before. You just hit press escape and then go to the main menu and select the modes tab and you'll be able to sign up for OPR. And elite points of interest. Add a load chance drop rate for arena tuning or some elite AI enemies in the nearby areas to where they're supposed to be spent. And then letters will appear on the gate markers and HUD during war and invasion. Help better players, players help better identify each gate. That's funny. I never had trouble with that, but I know a lot of people did. So that's really funny. I'm all the time being war. People are like go C, and I see everyone going A. I'm like, wait, that's A. That's not C. And everyone's like, wait, what? What do you mean? And I'm like, uh, it was funny. Anyway, so quests, uh, daily faction mission tokens rewarded have been increased by five times. Well, there you go. Killing withered beetles and Reed Gill fishery now properly use quest credit. Wow. I don't even I don't even know what that is. <laughs> Crafting. Uh, blight seeds are now epic instead of legendary. Quick salvaging a known recipe will notify you that you already know the recipe. Alcast now properly gains bonus items when crafted. And balance time named sword. Craft recipe rebounds cost less will be in line with other two three items. Expeditions. Uh, nothing too crazy I don't recall on this one. Isabel's expedition loot. You'll get these different ones. Isabel's rapier. Black guards fire staff. This armor. Ring. Void gauntlet. Uh, height not to critical hits augmented with plague make this avoid on the war the back black guard so new items get from that character transfer panel now displays number of free character transfers owned but that they still aren't selling them fixed issues caused by, caused by players exceeding 500 unique items in their inventory just fix a bunch of issues nothing crazy and play again players could sign up for invasions of war from map by default again and other than that, they updated the rested XP visuals so they're more apparent when the bonus is active. And that's really about all that we got for this month. Well, there's your monthly update on New World. That is what is going on. I actually still play this game, believe it or not. And that's hard to believe for the people watching me play through Elden Ring and do Pokemon and all those other games. I actually still play this game. I actually raise money for my company and just give it to them all the time. And then I play OPR every so often. But anyway, uh, that's what's going on. Uh, they're really good quality of life changes. I still am rooting for that day when they make it so you can upgrade your gear with Umbral Shards without having your expertise 600. That's something that really sucks real bad for me. But other than that, things are looking good. Good changes. Uh, and then next month is April. And if I recall correctly in their dev blog video, April was another bug fix month, which I can't believe I'm saying this, but guys, they need it. I don't, I don't, I like, honestly, guys, I actually like this game and I play this game, but I'm going to be honest with you guys. They did a bug fix month. And they just made it so much worse afterwards. Like, it was hard to believe. I didn't play very much during that month. And then the patch came out, and like a week later, I played. And things were just worse. I go to, you know, repost somebody with my rapier, and I get the interaction where it does the animation like 700 times in two seconds. And he's like, -da 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 -da, whatever. And then it didn't even do it, and I just took damage. And I'm like, what in the hell? Is, what even is this? And then uh, the thing where... I'm trying to swap weapons and it won't swap. And my company members were telling me, oh yeah, if you spam the swap button, then it can't swap. You have to press it. And if it doesn't go, you have to wait and then press it again. And if it doesn't go, you have to wait and then press it again. If you just spam it, then it physically can't swap weapons. There's like, that's just two things, but it's like that everywhere. It's the desync's worse. It blows my mind. 
they had a whole month to make it better, and it for at least from my perspective, it's all just worse. But they're gonna do another month to fix it, and let's hope that April actually fixes a lot of that, because that was that was wild to come back, and I was like, this is worse. This is so much worse than it's ever been. Blew my mind. Blew my mind. But anyway. Uh, still rooting for this game though, loves game. Hopefully it works out long term gross, but that's what's going on in March. Uh, Blunderbuss is in, new expedition is in, queue for wars and evasions is now a thing. Transferring items between storages, even when your faction doesn't own them and it's being free is a thing, which is honestly the thing I'm probably the most excited about to be honest with you guys. Uh, but yeah, all these new things, all these good quality of life changes are, are gonna be coming out, not today, but tomorrow actually. I was actually looking into it more. And there was this post tomorrow, 8 a.m. my time, which is 5 a.m. Pacific time and 2 p.m. for most of Europe. So that is when this patch is coming out, the 29th of March, which was very confusing. I forgot to look at that post first. So tomorrow morning slash early afternoon, depending where you live, the Heart of Madness update is like March update is coming out, going to live servers in New World. 